Lord Angelo, having affairs to heaven, intends you for his swift ambassador, where you shall be an everlasting leader. Therefore, your best appointment make with speed. Tomorrow you set on. Is there no remedy? None. But such remedy as to save a head, to cleave a heart in twain. But is there any? Yes, brother, you may live. There is a devilish mercy in the judge, if you'll implore it, that will free your life but fetter you till death. Perpetual durance. By just perpetual durance, a restraint, though all the world's vastidity you had to a determined scope. But in what nature? In such a one as you consenting to it would bark your honour from that trunk you bear and leave you <laughs> naked. Let me know the point. Oh, I do fear thee, Claudio. And I quake, lest thou a feverous life shouldst entertain and six or seven winters more respect than a perpetual honour. Dare thou die. The sense of death is most in apprehension. And the poor beetle that we tread upon in corporal sufferance finds a pang as great as when a giant dies. <laughs> Why give you me this shame? Think you I can a resolution fetch from flowery tenderness? If I must die, I will encounter darkness as a bride and hug it in mine arms. There spake my brother. There, my father's grave did utter forth a voice. <laughs> yes, thou must die. <laughs> Thou art too noble to conserve a life in base appliances. This outward sainted deputy whose settled visage and deliberate word nips youth in the head is yet a devil. His filth within being cast, he would appear a pond as deep as hell. The frenzy Angela. Oh, just the cunning livery of hell. Dost thou think, Claudio, if I would yield him my virginity, thou mightst be free. Heavens, it cannot be. This night's the time that I must do what I abhor to name, or else thou diest tomorrow. Thou shalt not do it. Or were it but my life, I'd throw it down for your deliverance as frankly as a pin. Thanks, dear Isabel. Be ready. Claudio, for your death tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. As the affections in him that thus can make him bite the law by the nose when he would force it. Sure, it is no sin. Or of the deadly seven, it is the least. Which is the least? If it were damnable, he being so wise, why would he for the momentary trick be perjurably fined? Oh, Isabel. What says my brother? Death is a fearful thing. A shamed life, a hateful. Aye, but to die and go we know not where. To lie in cold obstruction and to rot. This sensible warm motion to become a kneaded clod and the delighted spirit to bathe in fiery floods or to reside in thrilling region of thick ripped ice to be imprisoned in the viewless wind and blown with restless violence round about the pendant world or to be worse than worse of those that lawless and incertain thought imagine howling tis too horrible. The weariest and most loathed worldly life that age, ache,
penury and imprisonment can lay on nature is a paradise to what we fear of death. Alas, alas. Sweet sister, let me live. Oh. What sin you do to save a brother's life, nature dispenses with the deed so far that it becomes a virtue. Oh, you beast! Oh, faithless coward! Oh, dishonest wretch! Will thou be made a man out of my vice? This is not a kind of incest to take life from mine own sister's shame. What should I think? Heaven shield! My mother played my father fair for such a warped slip of wilderness ne'er issued from his blood. Take my defiance, die, perish! My, but my bending down, reprieve thee from thy fate, it should proceed. I'll pray a thousand prayers for thy death. No word to save thee. <laughs>